Well, it's official. The new atheists have won. But not in the way that you might expect. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So, what do I mean when I say the new atheists have won in a way that you might not have expected? Well, when you think about new atheists winning or achieving their goal, you might think to all those debates you see on YouTube, Christopher Hitchens, Sam Harris, coming up against all these religious leaders, apologists for religion. And you might think that winning would imply some way that they convinced one of these people that God, in fact, does not exist or that they convinced them or talked them out of their religion. But you're missing the point. An atheist does not need to talk a religious person out of their faith or convince them that God doesn't exist in order to win because they don't have a religion in the traditional sense that they're preaching or trying to convert you to. For them, winning is a completely different thing. And the religious leaders and the apologists have unwittingly shot themselves in the foot or rather taken a machine gun to their feet because in their attempts to seem relevant or be relevant or make their religious doctrine relevant for the modern times, they have unwittingly, or maybe not unwittingly, given the atheist movement exactly what it's asking for. Proof that their God and their religion doesn't exist. And they have succeeded in proving that. What? When did an atheist prove to a religious leader that God doesn't exist or that their religion is false? When did that happen? Well, like I said, the new atheists didn't have to prove that God doesn't exist in order to win. They didn't have to talk a religious leader out of their faith in order to get what they wanted from them. You see, it wasn't a matter of proving anything. It wasn't a matter of getting some kind of message across that convinced people that God doesn't exist or that religion in general cannot be true. All they needed to do was prove that that religious leader was false and that that religious practice was false. And they didn't, again, need to prove that themselves because they relied on the leadership in the religions to do that themselves. You see, you have to remember that somebody in the atheist or new atheist movement doesn't actually care if you believe in God or not. They don't care if people have superstitious beliefs. They don't care if people have skewed religious views and doctrines. All they want is to eliminate it from society. They want it to become less and less and frowned upon and ridiculed so that it doesn't exist in the public sphere. And the way that they succeeded in doing that was not disproving religion. It wasn't in defeating religious apologists. What they did was they kept hitting religion with this battering ram over and over and over again, a moral battering ram, because what they were professing was that these religions by their own standards weren't moral or by the standards of what we have come to accept as morality, that those religions were immoral and therefore their God was evil and degenerate and or fake, because what they're actually saying is that if he existed, he would be this evil character and so he wouldn't be God and so he doesn't exist. So they didn't succeed in convincing anyone of that, but what they did by, by hitting the religious world with this battering ram so repeatedly was that religious leaders started to cave, not in their profession of belief, but in their doctrine, in their practices, in the rhetoric. So people like Christopher Hitchens would come along and smash religion for its quote-unquote um, horrible, disgusting, degenerate God. And he would quote, Old Testament verses in the Quran and and all kinds of things. And he specifically liked to target Christianity and Jesus is the worst of them because he says it was the first one to um, promise punishment and pain um, for eternity in the afterlife. That was his, his uh, way of looking at it. Um, and so he hit religion with this um, moral battering ram over and over again until religious leaders started to have to defend themselves. And so you'd have people like that saying, well, God is for slavery and murder and genocide and uh, mutilating children and all so on and so forth. And so religious leaders, instead of ignoring that and moving on with their lives, um, they, they, their egos got so involved that they had to defend it. They had to defend their religious views. And in doing so, what they said was things like, well, that's not what God really meant in the Bible. 
that's not really the way we're supposed to take it. That might have been for then, but not for the modern era. Well, the second you say that, you've done all the work for them. Because if religion is based on the word of God and is immutable and eternal, and now you as the authority figure can update it and change it for the times, all you've done is prove that even if the original text, the original scripture, the original document, the original word of God was true and was the truth, whatever it is that you're practicing is not. So in your attempts to modernize, you've actually proved yourself a false teacher. You know, there are so many examples of this, and it's not just in the big moral issues. It's even in things like uh, traditional um, religious garb and the way that that updates and, and changes over time and the way that people see uh, the clothing in their religion and how important that is um, for some kind of uh, religious ceremony. And oftentimes you see how, how weird and, and dishonest the culture is around that. You see that in the Jewish community. Uh, you'll see people from Hasidic groups wearing long black coats and white shirts and, and fedoras or, or some kind of Hamburg black hat, um, you know, garb from anywhere from the 1700s onwards and claiming that that's religious garb and that you have to wear that, and people that don't wear it are looked upon as less religious, inferior, less Jewish, right? You're, you're making a claim that that is some kind of religious tradition, but it can't possibly go back to the original scripture, the original document, the original religious beliefs. And so by change, and then on the flip side, you have people saying, oh, you don't need any religious garb at all, you don't need anything traditional, we're going to update for the modern times. So you have the modern orthodox, the reform in Judaism. If, if you had the Catholic church was the, was the church, the only church in Christianity, and now you have the Protestant church, and that's not a singular thing, that's a bunch of different um, theologies and philosophies, and really it's a bunch of different religions, all that's updated over time and so different from the original scripture, and so different from the original practices, and so different from the original authorities, you're making all the evidence right there that you need for any atheist to say, well, I don't even need to disprove God. I don't even need to disprove your scripture. You've done it for me.